Well, good morning to everyone. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Great to see all of you and to, to be able to, to minister uh, even in the, uh, even in the, the, the medium that, uh, where I can't see you, but uh, I sense your presence. This morning, I'm speaking to you about the temptations of Christ, the church, and the Christian. And I've uh, chosen Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3, and uh, Luke chapter 4, verse, verses 1 through 13. So what is temptation? And how does temptation strike you? More importantly, how do you handle it? It's possible to view temptation as a trap or a snare or a stumbling block uh, along the way of each believer's uh, earthly journey. Kind of an everyday fact. It's also possible to view it as a sudden drastic crisis, uh, forcing a choice, uh, which is a test. It may uh, loom up quickly uh, at a fork in life's road. Uh, it's a forced choice of alternatives. It's never accidental. It's always inwardly probing, always crucial, always fierce, sometimes and oftentimes because it is very real. This is not shadow boxing or pantomime. It involves the issues of life and death. So let's look at the, the temptations in the Bible. Temptation in the Bible has two chief meanings. The first is that inward prompting or enticement or allurement uh, to sin which our consciences make us familiar. It's regarded as the, the devil's work or the work of the world or even the work of, of your own inward innate inclination to sin. The second main sense of the word temptation in the Bible means trial or testing and refers to circumstances in life which Test a person's faith and courage and resolution. It may sanctify life and build character. Often, both senses are present and possible. You can see both meanings in the biblical account of our Lord's temptations. It was God, the Holy Spirit, who led and perhaps even drove Jesus to seek the wilderness. But it was the devil who tempted him there in the wilderness. So let's look at the, the temptations of Christ. He was the one who taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation, and had himself been led by the Spirit to go where temptation was. He knew its strength, and its danger. His own temptation, uh, all three of his temptations, stretching over a period of, of 40 days, were wholly concerned with the choice between right and wrong, between higher and lower means of carrying out the mission on which his Heavenly Father had sent him. And with subordinating means to ends instead of saying or acting that a noble and in justifies any means. Can we doubt the seriousness of these 40 days of, of decisive conflict? On the outcome hung the, the whole issue of his mission on earth and every hope of salvation for mankind. Our Lord was setting out upon the mission of his heavenly Father. His mission was to, to bring his own people and all mankind into the kingdom of God, free from the evil one. 
And for that mission, he possessed gifts and powers that were brought to, to light in, in fullness at his baptism by John the Baptist, when the voice from heaven declared, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But those gifts and powers were his only for the purpose of his mission. He was not to use them for private purposes or selfish ends uh, uh, of his own. So he must resist, even strike down each and every temptation uh, to misuse his gifts or abuse his powers. We don't know which wilderness was the scene of the temptation of our Lord. We do know that the wilderness meant that uh, Jesus was very much alone in, in, in the entire time of solitude and struggle. Alone, that is, except for the, the, the presence of Satan, the evil one. That mighty, mighty evil being uh, whose names are also slanderer and liar. Well earned in, in every sense, the, the Garden of Eden. The tempting of the devil was continuous and powerful, deliberately designed uh, opposition to God and the works of God. He was actually present in hand-to-hand -hand conflict with the Son of God who had chosen to become also the Son of Man. So, there's a first big if here. First temptation in our text is the temptation of the flesh. It starts with the big if. If you are the son of God, so starts the devil's central plea. It's designed to undercut the completeness of the loyalty and Christ acceptance of the necessary limitations that, that was put on him in his redemptive mission as the voluntary son of man. He was never to use his divine power for self-gratification or for the fulfillment of his uh, uh, merely human needs. The tempter gives him the choice between the spectacular and the prophetic, the miraculous and the priestly. He lures Jesus to preoccupation with externals. He was hungry, very hungry, and the appeal was tricky. It was a deep-seated lure and, and a lure which the miraculous tends often to hold for human beings. His rejection of the temptation lies in the living proclamation of the, of the living word of God. The second big if is the, is the temptation designed to be a bargain sale. Jesus is to choose between a, a wholly unrestrained display of power as second in command to the prince of this world now and the promise of future glory after suffering by the way of the cross and death. So the view that was given him was big. The view was beautiful and alluring. Uh, the price of exchange was apostasy in exchange for one simple act of worship. So this big if, if you then will worship me, all this shall be yours. To exchange the whole world for one simple act of devil worship might sound like a good bargain and a fair exchange, but uh, after all, it's only a slight concession. Jesus could gain a lot by conceding a little, but thereby he would deny his heavenly father's exclusive, absolute, and total claim on him without competition, with no compromise, without a bit of concession. So there's a third big if. The temptation of the spirit. 
To tempt God is, is the highest spiritual enticement. This took place in the holy city. In fact, in Jerusalem, the holiest of the holy cities. And there, not just anywhere, but on the very pinnacle of, of the holiest of holy buildings, the temple. Hmm. To this, the devil adds the holy book. Hmm. The holy Bible. By quoting from the book of Psalms, from it, the fallen angel ventures to speak even of those mysterious, mighty creatures, the holy angels, and invites the Savior to place, even for a moment, a false trust in holy things. It would have been a, a, a very respectable and, and highest sin. And again, the big if, if you are the Son of God, does the man... Or the Son of Man have a right to force or even attempt to force God's hand? To dictate to providence? To bargain with God? To say, uh, I dare you? To, to, to startle a, a, a shallow uh, generation into saying, we defy you? To play God and, and to make my own rules? This is the most subtle the most plausible of the temptations. It was the temptation which made the devil out of the holy angel. Christ's response is direct and unconditional. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. This last temptation had all the attractions of a shortcut to glory around three years of ministry and, and mission in the midst of misery. In the face of opposition against the looming shadows of the cross, it must have seemed like a way of escape, an out, the easy way. But we know in all of these points, our Lord overcame the tempter. In each case, he changed the big if to an affirmation of trust and faithfulness based on the sure word of God. He did so despite the, the temptation to use his godly power for his own physical comfort, despite the temptation of the will to gain material power by evil means, and despite the temptation of the spirit to try sensational experiments to curry the, the, the divine favor. Jesus the Word overcame flesh, with the word of God in his own pure and consecrated strength. Now, what about the church and, and the Christian? Everyone who comes to serve the Lord must prepare for three kinds of temptation. They don't necessarily come all at the same time, they seldom come in the same order. Everyone who is the vaguest and, and, and in the vaguest and feeblest ways sets out a response to God's call to serve his generation as a Christian must have in various degrees and manners of all three. The temptation of the body which is the central person's temptation, the temptation of the will, which is the ambitious person's, and the temptation of the spirit, which is the religious person's temptation to mere religiosity. Only religious people can have the third temptation, but they do not have, uh, have that on a... On a on that account, escape the other two. Every Christian, that means us here, must prepare himself by the word of God, by the armor of God, and by the strength of God. 
The temptations of our Lord are the temptations of all mankind. It doesn't make any difference under uh, what flag we live, to what country we belong, uh, where we hold our citizenship, or, or what color or race we hold, whether our nation is new or old, whether we are the inheritors of the earth or it's dispossessed and displaced. The temptations of our Lord are the temptations of his church. The church as the people of God must be committed to the food that abides. It must use power, but it better be the power of the gospel. And the church must always pray, not my will, but your will be. The temptations of our Lord are, are repeated in the temptations that, that come to you in your, in your daily vocations and your calling as maybe as public figures or private persons in the kingdom of God. The scale is smaller, but because of Jesus Christ, the power of resistance and the grace of forgiveness are even greater. Actually, it's, it's not the temptation which strengthen faith, but God's grace conveyed through the gospel in word and even in, in sac sacraments that we have here. Their full use gives full power to a stand and oftentimes even profit from temptation. For an enlarged use of God's means of grace means a renewed supply of his grace and power for daily living. Christ made his temptations into a day of victory. That's the gospel. And that's the good news for each and every one of us. Father, thank you. Thank you for this word this morning. Help us, Lord, in our in our weakness to stand strong in you to avoid the temptations of, of, of evil that, that are always around us uh, knocking at our door Lord help us to keep focused on you the author and finisher of our faith in Jesus name